Hey y'all, so today I am going to be replacing the ExpressOS receiver. Uh, this is the EP2 receiver that I had previously installed on my iFlight Nazgul Evoke. Um, and I'm going to be replacing that with a new, a brand new uh, EP1 receiver. Uh, hopefully it holds up a bit better because you can see with the previous one in crash maybe uh, the ceramic antenna uh, snapped off of the PCB there. I'll put some on-screen footage here. I was seeing symptoms of this even before I had this particular crash, the one that resulted in the arms disattaching themselves from the quad. And so that actually resulted in the crash that caused these arms to snap. I fail safed uh, over asphalt and snapped both of those arms. And so I will be replacing that with the new antenna that I've got here. Uh, and I'm gonna be walking you all through it today. So uh, let's get right into it. So first thing, let's see what we got in this package here. Let me go ahead and open this up let's see what we get with this okay so three rusty quads battery strap seat and right here uh pre-installed elrs v 3.01 nice so that it comes with 3.01 uh, we are going to be updating that but let's go ahead and open this up seems pretty standard electrostatic bag uh, for the pcb uh, so that it's not damaged in transit let's see here and rip this right open. So within here, uh, I went for the EP1 rather than the EP2 again, uh, just because I wanted the additional durability of a solid antenna rather than a ceramic antenna, and plus having the UFL connector here to swap out should the antenna break, uh, it should be useful for me uh, in the future. Uh, plus, it does look like it came with an extra antenna here. Uh, you can see that there is two antennas, and so I will have an extra in case I have any breaks. So right here is just the same exact board uh, that we had on the broken one over here, uh, but instead of having a ceramic antenna, it's got a, uh, a UFL connector for a real uh, T antenna there. So we're going to be taking this and we're actually going to be soldering it right in place of the previous one. So the existing EP2 connector that I had on here has this heat shrink on it. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is remove that. I don't think I ever actually shrunk the heat shrink. I think I just put it over it. That may have had an impact on the durability and why the ceramic antenna broke in the first place, but that will just pull right off. You can see the ceramic antenna actually did just come, let's see if I can make it focus on that, did just come right off uh, with the heat shrink whenever I pulled that out. I could possibly get a, a replacement ceramic antenna and solder that onto the PCB here, but that is not something I am doing today. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a note of which wires are which. I'll put on the screen a wiring diagram for the EP1 and EP2 connectors, and this is not going to be a soldering tutorial. Joshua Bardwell did release a soldering tutorial right here if you wanted to go check that out. All right, so now since we've got the old one off, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the new one ready. Got the new one in here. I've loose fit it in there, make sure that I want to be using this antenna rather than the longer one here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that soldered up now. I'm gonna be using these little tweezers here. Uh, they're actually broken, but they should do the trick of holding it in place just a little bit better while I go ahead and get this soldered up. This would be better done with some uh, blue tack, uh, but I don't have any right now, so uh, this is going to have to do. So I'll go ahead and get that there, just like that, and I'll go ahead and tin these pads.
fantastic. Now that wasn't the best soldering job. I'm not the best solderer and will never claim to be, uh, but I do think it will do the trick. We've got them all in order here and they are all on their pads. Uh, I don't think any of the pads are bridged. Yep, so none of the pads are bridged, so we should be good to go. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and unclip that from there. Retwist these wires back up there. Uh, one thing I should have thought of before is putting on the heat shrink uh, before we do that. So we, it might have helped us a little bit better if we were to thread this heat shrink on, but I do think we're gonna be able to fit it around this antenna, hopefully. Uh, because this is pretty bendable. Yeah, I think we're gonna be able to get that on. Let's go ahead and squeeze that through. There we go. Uh, and we'll hit this with a heat gun to protect those connections and protect the, the board entirely so that the whole thing can be covered in heat shrink. All right, so I am back. I hit that with a heat gun. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of jam this up in there. And then all I have to do is reassemble the frame. I am still waiting on the carbon parts for that, as well as the additional motors. So I am not gonna be reassembling my frame right now. What I will be able to do is go ahead and update the RLRS firmware and I can actually get this paired to my radio. So I'll have the, the custom binding phrase and I'll show you how to set that up now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the Express LRS configurator here. I did just get the newest uh, version of the configurator from the GitHub to make sure that I'm all up to date which I am, we are going to be using the newest release, which is 3.2.1. Upgrading from 3.01 was the one that was originally on the board. That's what it shipped with. So we're going to be upgrading that there. We're going to choose the device category. That should be Happy Model 2.4 and the device is going to be EP1 right there. We're going to be flashing this over Wi-Fi and then we're going to go down to these. These are auto filled because I have done this in the past. This should be pretty simple for you to set up though. You can leave most of the things at default. I am in the US so I'm going to be using this regulatory domain. I have set up a custom binding phrase to go with my radio and I did also set up my home Wi-Fi SSID and password. So we're going to go ahead and build that now and we'll be back when that is done all right y'all so that has succeeded in the build it did open up a window right here uh, that shows where that firmware was written to so we'll take a note of that and then we'll go ahead and get our receiver powered on so i've got that up and powered now the express lrs documentation does note you may have to power your quad with a lipo in order to get your receiver to power on i did not have to do that but if that is something that you have to do uh, you should go ahead and remove your props so that you can be safe with powering on your quad on the bench so let's go ahead and get started uh, we're going to go ahead and go to wi-fi and find express lrs rx which is going to be for receiver we're going to go ahead and connect to that the default password should be express lrs in all lowercase so let's go ahead and enter in the password here now so i got that up and running we're connected to express lrs uh, one thing that I do want to share with y'all is that I did have to disable my VPN in order to access this. So you're going to open up a web browser. It uh, should prompt you to open up the web browser down here. You'll click on it and it should open up there. But if it doesn't, you can just open up a web browser and go to this address right here. And this is listed on the ExpressLRS documentation page. I'm going to go ahead and come in here and we're going to update this here. We're going to choose our firmware file. Come back over here to the one that we had before uh, go ahead and copy this path that we have here control c and we're going to paste that right up in here there we go choose the binary file the bin file uh, that is in relation to our build that we just did so we're going to go ahead and select that hit update here this should go ahead and update your receiver over wi-fi there we go, that's all been updated, and 
we should be good to go in relation to that firmware. Go ahead and open up Betaflight now. We'll get that open there, and then I'll go ahead and plug in my quad. Just like that, that should automatically connect right there. I'm gonna go down to the receiver tab right there, and I'm gonna power on my transmitter. Now you can see right there, everything did go smoothly and those values did update. Now if I move the sticks on my transmitter, you should see that is working properly within Betaflight, which is perfect. That means that the uh, receiver and the transmitter are connected and transmitting properly. So now this should be good to go ahead and fly. I'm still waiting on the arms and new motors for the Nazgul, but that has been successfully installed and we should be good to go in relation to moving forward. If you found this interesting and you wanted to stick around and see me get this flying again, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. I should have some more videos coming in regards to the installation of the other parts that I need to get this drone back up in the air. And then hopefully I can resume ripping and put out some more actual flying content for you. But until then, I'd like to say uh, you have a good one. Peace.